Choi Im Hyung, or Madam Choi, as she is known, was born into a family of performers. Her art is that of the celebrated form of Chinese Cantonese opera. Spectacles of costumes and characters from classical tales are visual delights she has learnt to present. My father was a musician. He'd created quite a name for himself. My mother cried. She specialised in crying roles. She was the crying queen. My name is Choi Yim Hyong. When I was young, my father gave me several names to choose from. I chose Yim Hyong. When I formed my troupe, I named it Yim Yong Teen. She has performed far and wide, Hong Kong, Thailand, Vietnam and shore to shore in Malaysia. The nature of her personality also makes her a good manager. Yet, with ease and warmth, she opens her stage to us, her audience, a wealth of stories performed. Chinese opera, commonly known as Wayang, was brought to Malaya by Chinese immigrants in the late 19th century. It is performed in the Cantonese, Teochew, Hokkien and Hainanese dialects. Opera was staged as commercial entertainment and as ritual offerings to the gods. Nowadays, with other forms of entertainment, what more with people living further away from the city, it's increasingly difficult to expect a paying audience. So, we focus on performing at religious festivals instead. In the 1990s, opera performances are indeed associated primarily with religious and temple festivals. At the height of festivals in the Chinese lunar calendar, Madame Choi tours with her troupe. Invitations to perform abound, and she plays the role of a prima donna and manager with full charisma. Every year, the busiest months are February and June to September. There are many festivals for the gods. We perform regularly for the Festival of the Hungry Ghost. We find Madame Choi and her troupe, Yim Yong Thien, in a town called Rahankachil in the state of Negri Sembilan. This festival is in conjunction with the month of the hungry ghosts in the Chinese lunar calendar. Ritual performances are held on makeshift stages set up in temple grounds or open spaces. The staging of an opera is as much an occasion for social gathering as it is a public offering. How do the temples contact me? Forty years ago, I didn't worry because my father had a troupe. He was famous and was always contacted by organizers. Before, a few people would have to drive over personally to arrange matters. In the last 20 years, it became easier to just use the telephone. What more with mobile phones nowadays? In the last two to three years, networking has improved. Whenever I'm away performing, I even have an answering machine at home. 
If I'm away for a month, organizers can get worried. But there's always the mobile phone. So performances can be easily arranged. The only problem with mobile phones is service in remote areas. Sometimes there's no service and you can't get a line. I think about stories that will suit different performances. If I feel some of the classical stories are not suited for the current audience, I make changes. I adapt it somewhat. Aware of shifting times, Madam Choi knows the value of making her art more appealing. Changes include the use of colloquial dialect and the expansion of the comic sequences with contemporary references. Western instruments such as the saxophone have been introduced in the Cantonese opera. The way I see it, you've got to deal with audiences who don't know about Chinese opera. Some could be English educated. Even the Chinese educated mostly speak Mandarin, not necessarily the Cantonese dialect we use when we perform. So it's still a problem for Mandarin speakers. But I believe if we're well prepared and the performers are committed, the audience will realize that Chinese opera can be accessible and entertaining. There has to be innovation in set and costumes, like adding a smoke machine for effect. We also make sure the acting and singing is good. Hopefully, Constant renewal will perpetuate the form. If anything happens to me and I'm no longer young, so I have to think of the best ways to pass this on to younger people. Chinese opera stories focus on the life and deeds of famous generals, emperors, China's aristocracy, romantic love between the scholar and the beauty, fairies, demons, and the conquests of barbaric tribes. Some of the popular Chinese opera stories are drawn from historical novels, like Romance of the Three Kingdoms, The Water's Edge, or folk tales like Lady Whitesnake. Madame Choi's own life story has epic dimensions. The Japanese occupation started soon after I was born. We lived in Ampang then. We owned a coffee shop called Nam Fat. When the Japanese came, we fled and settled in a town called Bentong. A performance site was available there. I was only seven or eight years old when we started performing there. We didn't have proper scripts then. My father would outline the roles and tell me how to act. You didn't really have a choice. When you're seven and supposed to start school, but the war broke out, you just fled and followed your parents. We used to fry coffee beans to sell. When the war broke out, we hid our birth certificates in the furnace, but we forgot about it, so they got burnt. We fled with our parents. My uncle asked the four of us to become soldiers. He asked us and we just followed. So we trained to become soldiers. You didn't have a choice. When you're seven or eight, you think you look smart in a soldier's uniform. We were not afraid.
When peace was restored, my mother became a shrewd businesswoman, selling black market goods and making sacks of Japanese banana currency. But after the war, the currency was worthless. She was frustrated to the point of falling ill. So we fled back to our coffee shop in Ampang after the war. My father asked me what I wanted to do. I was about 11 or 12 then. I said I wanted to study. He supported my decision. I enrolled in a primary school, but the teachers and students were not Chinese. They were Indians. Because I was used to speaking in Chinese, it was all alien to me. Apple, orange, it was very painful. Spelling things like C-A-T, cat, for instance, was torturous. If you spoke to me in Cantonese stage dialogue, I could have replied instantly. There are certain stage conventions and procedures for all gestures in the opera. For instance, the actor walks around the stage to show that he has traveled a long distance or to show that time has passed. The musical ensemble is divided into the civil or wen ensemble comprising wind and string instruments and the military or wu ensemble comprising percussion instruments. The civil section accompanies singing and provides background music whenever needed. Percussion instruments play when there is a change of scene or during dramatic situations like fighting sequences. Madam Choi used to know how to fight using three weapons at a time. We performed in Sabah for two years. If you look closely, you will see a scar. We performed fighting scenes with real weapons then. That fateful night, the person I was fighting with had had two drinks at a reunion. Because he'd had a few drinks, he wasn't sober. At the climax of our fighting, he accidentally cut me under the eye. I bled profusely. Three days later, I had to perform again. So I plastered the scar and applied makeup over it. I applied medication, controlled my diet so the scar healed well. That was a frightful memory. Even my mother fainted. Male roles in the opera include the Lao Sung, old male, Xiao Sung, young male, and Wu Sung, military male. <laughs> Women take on roles such as Qing Yi, virtuous tragic heroine, Hua Dan, flirtatious lady, and Dao Ma Dan, female warrior. Madam Choi has played both male and female roles. In her heyday, she was a heroine to be reckoned with. Beauty was a virtue which brought her places. 
At the end of 1954, my mother and I went to Hong Kong because my godfather distributed lemon powder which cured headaches. I was a young girl of 18 then, so he asked me to be a model in advertisements, holding up the lemon powder he was selling. So I became the lemon powder girl. My godfather introduced me in Hong Kong as the lemon powder girl from Malaysia. That way, I managed to get TV acting work in Hong Kong. The presence of actresses of star quality can be what draws an audience. My main actress's name is Choi Hong. Mine is Choi Yim Hyung. We have the same father. My mother was the first wife. In Malaysia, she is considered a designer label actress. Romance is the key element in most stories. Last time, my mother approved of a man for me. I remember his name was Sao Xin. He was a doctor and cared for my sick mother and healed her. We courted each other for seven months and we wrote to each other after I left Vietnam. Letters were more common than phone calls then. Later, he decided to leave Vietnam because of the onset of communism. He wrote to tell me that he wanted to move to Malaysia. I thought it was a good idea. The year he came was the year my mother died, 1957. We rekindled our romance. Barely two months later, we broke up. It was me who wanted out. You see, he was very handsome then. Everyone considered him a hero, so a lot of girls liked him. I had many admirers too, lots of wealthy men. It's not to say anything, but I've sat in a Rolls Royce before, in Singapore. My boyfriend complained that I had too many admirers, but it was true. He also got a lot of attention from rich housewives who came to watch the shows. So he was quite selfish too, busy entertaining them. Isn't it true? Wouldn't anyone be jealous? He was always arriving home late and even left presents from his lady friends on my bed. He would open the presents in front of me the next morning. When I look back, it's funny how selfish and bad-tempered we were. So it didn't last long. He complained I had many boyfriends. At least I didn't sleep over at their place. I just took the opportunity of being chauffeured around once in a while. That's all. From the late 50s onwards, the popularity of Hong Kong filmed Chinese opera took away a live audience. This was the lowest point for Chinese opera. When you act for the camera, it's strange because you could be looking at empty space in front of you. I want to go to Hong Kong. I'm getting my flight ticket tomorrow. Don't stop me.
Sometimes there wouldn't be anyone in front of you. On stage, there's always an actor or person in front of you. We play off each other, and that's always more fulfilling. Another problem is overacting. In opera, you're called a wooden actor if you don't have expression. For TV, it's all about subtle emotions. It's about the satisfaction from an appreciative audience. You can't buy that. When I'm not busy performing, I teach students. There are several Chinese associations whose members I teach. Since I've got the time, I teach them. Madam Choi now passes on her craft to enthusiasts, amateurs with an interest to learn. As long as a student shows interest, I do my best. But interest alone does not make a good performer. It can be harder for some people to learn. It depends on your talent and ideas. I can't expect all the students I teach to be good. On the other hand, there are some who do better on stage than during rehearsals, and the reverse is also true. I have to be aware of this when I teach, but the moment they step on stage, I have to let them go. I tell them not to be disappointed if they don't do well. It's during rehearsals that I push them to realize their potential. My troupe, Yim Yong Thin, has performed around Malaysia since 1963. This is my final year. I am going to stop after this year. I'm closing down Yim Yong Thin. I'm already 65. Don't I look it? Of course I do. I'm old. My assistant, Lam Chao Yi, was captivated by Chinese opera and has followed me for 19 years. She holds the record for putting up with me the longest. She says she's the only person who can stand me. I'm not that fierce, really. It's been 19 years, so I'll hand my troupe over to her. With less responsibilities to worry about, I can focus on teaching more students, preparing them for more performances and generating new talent. Wouldn't that be healthier for the art form? Regrets? Only that I don't know how to drive a car. At 65, I still don't have a driver's license. Six years ago, my sister asked me to park a car, but I crashed it instead. I gave up after that. Madam Choi never married and doesn't have any children. She says there's little to worry about. Her drive is to perpetuate Chinese opera till the day she dies. Yin